This is a hole in the ice that is two feet thick. We are above the Arctic Circle, and it is really cold up here. This water here is about as cold as you can get. My goal is to sit in this water for three minutes as a way to explain to you what is happening to my body. <laughs> and at this very moment, I am not sure I would say it's good for you. Hey everybody, today I'm talking about the science of ice plunging. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty, what does the science say, and what can we learn about it to use ourselves. And like I do with all of our videos, we decided we would be up here in the frozen north and try it ourselves. And if you stick with me, by the end of this, you will know everything you need to know about ice plunging. I don't know if I you can, can do this. Yeah! 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 Woo! Oh yeah! Cold plunging or cold water immersion is now a popular online trend. You may have seen it from your favorite influencer. People like the Iceman, Wim Hof, and Huberman have popularized this even more. But this is a tradition that has been practiced for centuries all over the world, from Japanese misogi rituals to Scandinavian cold water swimming. And that Nordic tradition of dipping in the cold is why I'm here with this incredible group of science YouTubers. So we're gonna get into the ice together, one at a time. Very curious how different people respond to the cold. And as we go through this process together, I'm going to explain what we know about the human body right when we enter, then what's happening upon exit, and finally, what we know about long-term benefits. <sighs> First things first, as we're all standing here, I can say we're a tad nervous. Getting in the ice water is not easy. Personally, I am not a professional at this by any means. I can't say I actually enjoy this. I only started a few years ago in the Baltic Sea and it wasn't nearly as cold there. <laughs> and chances are your first time will not sound as terrible as I did on mine. That's embarrassing. <laughs> what you're witnessing here is one of the most physiologically intense reactions. It's known as the cold shock response. And it includes a gasp reflex, and that can be pretty dangerous if your head goes underwater. Rapid breathing. This is a type of hyperventilation as your body struggles to adjust to the temperature drop. And a heart rate spike. Your cardiovascular system is kicking into overdrive, and it is increasingly risky if you have a heart condition. And no joke, every time I tried to get into the cold in the past, I could not for the life of me tell my brain, a little bit cold, to stop this reaction. Not bad. I can totally do this. The good news is there's no way you will have as stupid of a reaction as I do. But this time, here in the Arctic, I wanted it to be different. I said to myself, I know this is not dangerous. I told myself it's mind over matter. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't help. Essentially, it is a fight or flight response of my sympathetic nervous system, and four main things are happening. First, my brain is releasing hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline that end up creating a huge cascade of other hormones. Then vasoconstriction. The blood vessels in my extremities are shrinking and tightening, and that's pushing blood towards the core to protect my vital organs. And then your heart rate increases and hyperventilation. So my breathing rate is increasing and I'm taking short, shallow breaths. Both of these are to help the body get more oxygen into the body and maintain my core body temperature. And I wasn't alone in this cold shock response. No. <laughs> <laughs> but some people who had done this a lot were quite good at controlling their breathing. This is a long-term benefit that intrigued me. <laughs> After the initial cold shock response, which lasts about 20 to 30 seconds, your body is still sensing the intense pain, and it really hurts. It's really cold, yeah. but I don't like it. Man, buddy, you're strong, dude. Yeah. But it, and if you want to know what this is like, but you've never done a cold plunge, go grab a piece of ice and see if you can hold on to it tightly for a minute. It hurts? Yes. Maybe it, now it stings. All right, now can I? But then at one minute, something amazing happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at the moon. Nice. The pain goes away. At this point, oh, I feel God. numb. And this can be explained because first, the blood flow to the nerves in the skin and extremities is low so that you conserve heat. 
And two, the cold in those extremities slows down nerve conduction, and that reduces the ability of pain receptors to send strong signals to the brain. And three, the body has already released a ton of endorphins, which are natural painkillers. Finally, your parasympathetic nervous system is now engaged, which counteracts the cold shock response. It's a shift that stabilizes your breathing, it lowers your heart rate a bit, and it creates a sense of calm. And for me, this swing went really far the other direction. Oh man. I'll admit, it was a wonderful feeling. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it only took you a few seconds to get your breathing. But at this stage, I understand it is a precarious situation. If you just stayed here and did nothing, your body would enter stages of hypothermia, which can ultimately lead to death. I'll focus more on that in another video, but needless to say, after three minutes, I thought I would dunk my head fully and get out. What your body experiences upon exit is fascinating. Everything feels really good. It felt good. Even my friend Alex, who expressed some serious doubts about the benefit of cold plunging, seemed to be feeling pretty good at this very moment. It feels goddamn good. Thank you. But it's just like, it feels like I'm on fire. Now that we're all out, it's off to the sauna. This is the sauna back here. And I can tell you that entire night was an incredible time for group bonding and relaxation. He's going back in, Jonas and Rob are out there. And here's where it's interesting. An initial review of the scientific literature points to a few long-term benefits. One, it can increase dopamine up to 250%, which is amazing because that is the motivation hormone. Two, regular cold plunging has been shown to reduce anxiety, depression, and stress, making it a pill-free solution for a lot of people. And exposure to cold showers, like in one study, boosted the immune system of people who had 29% less sick days. Afterwards, there is also a dramatic reduction in inflammation, which is why I started doing it originally. All of my old sports injuries tended to go away the day of my plunge. Also, cold dips enhance sleep, which is a fantastic benefit as sleep does seem to be the best performance enhancing drug. And finally, cold exposure increases brown fat, which leads to an increased metabolic rate. So what blew me away is that there really are tons of studies on cold plunging. But since my friend Alex was a skeptic, I looked into the reasons for that a little bit more. And if any of you are an advocate of cold plunging, you need to know these things. First, there are not many large-scale and long-term studies. Most studies are actually pretty small. Plus, a lot of the studies look at correlation rather than causation. So in other words, people who cold plunge also tend to eat well, exercise, and do mindfulness-type activities. Also, it's worth noting that unlike certain pharmaceuticals, people do respond differently to cold plunges. Some people are energized, but others can experience increased stress. Plus, just like the snake oil salesman that says his product will cure your cancer, the benefits of ice plunging may appear overhyped by some, especially if, well, they have some sort of financial interest in it. Plus, the risks may not be fully explained, such as don't do this if you have a bad heart. That cold shock response is intense, and the exposure to cold for some people can really stress them out. Finally, it's worth noting that men respond differently than women, as do women at different ages and stages within their cycle. The point is, in all of this, there is not just one answer as to the benefits of cold plunging for everyone. So I understand all of those critiques, but I also have experience now with a lot of people getting into the water in these courses that we do. First ice plunge? First ice plunge. Yeah. Everyone that I've seen seems to have a tremendous benefit from it. This Heck is yeah, right? pretty special. Now, even if you're a skeptic, I would encourage you to try it yourself. Damn it, Rob, you brought me all the way out here. <laughs> and Rob. not a lot of people talk about this in the literature, but somehow when you're in the water, your troubles melt away. It's kind of shut everything out and calmed me down. I love it. <laughs> For a few minutes, you're not worried. You're not anxious. It's kind of a miracle drug in that way. Oh boy. And for at least those in the group, one final oh. thing rang true. They're more resilient and they're stronger oh. for having pushed themselves oh to the limit. I'm one proud of myself because that's that's something I never thought I'd ever do, ever. It's dope. <laughs> And if you like the way I did this video, I have lots of videos that I'm putting out here on Stone Age Man. Maybe start with this one next. Holy smokes! Wow, look look overhead! Look straight up! Look straight up! Oh my god! 